Welcome to BizTech Forward, your go-to podcast for cutting-edge insights at the intersection of business and technology. Join us as we explore the trends, innovations, and strategies shaping the future of the digital world. Let's move forward together. Welcome back to BizTech Forward, the podcast where we chat about technology and business with some of the brightest minds at Daytart. I'm Ani from the Media Relations team, and I'm here to talk with these brightest minds to pick their brains, if you will. Today, I have the real pleasure of speaking with Anastasia Rajev, head of Daytart's design studio. We will discuss all things design, but specifically UI UX and practices around it. Hi, Anastasia, it's so good to have you here. Hi, I'm happy to be here. Um, just to give you a quick introduction of our guest, uh, Anastasia leads Daytart's design studio overseeing a team of UI UX designers, researchers, 3D artists, and webmasters. She joined DataArt in 2006 as a senior designer and became head of the design studio in 2014. Before DataArt, though, Anastasia worked as a designer, art director, and web design instructor. She also spent a year at Bauhaus Kolleg in Germany and frequently speaks at UX conferences and writes about design, too. That's Quite a bit, Anastasia. Again, such a pleasure to have you here with us. Uh, we will get into the amazing world of UI UX design in a minute. But before, I kind of want to get to know the, the person behind the pixels, so to say. So, Anastasia, would you tell us briefly a little bit about your journey? How did you get into UI UX design? Was it something you were always passionate about or how did this happen? Uh, well, uh, uh... I couldn't uh, be always passionate about it because when I started, um, like when I was a kid, there was no UX UI, basically. So when I was very little, I, I remember I wanted to be a bus driver for some reason. And so I imagine, uh, I, I imagined that I would clean the floor of my bus and then have some curtains and flowers, uh, very romantic. Uh, anyway, uh, I finished the school with intense course of English and uh, also uh, the School of Arts simultaneously. So I had this choice, either to go to the some language department or to continue with uh, some sort of arts. Uh, apparently, arts won this competition uh, and I went to the Academy of uh, Art and Design uh, and there I graduated with the degree in um, information design, uh, which is pretty close to uh, the current day UX. But at that time, uh, again, there was no such concept of UX. Uh, but my parents uh, were or are uh, programmers. They are developers. That's why my first... Uh, job was creating a website for some of my dad's friends and that was basically how I started doing it because when I graduated I was the only person in the whole department who graduated with the work um, with web design uh, so it was a rather new idea uh, but then, of course, uh, gradually uh, UX was introduced to the world and that's how it continued. Oh, wow. And, and that gradually UX was introduced to the world. Uh, when would that be, roughly? Oh, that's a good question. Um, uh, when I thought about it, uh, like getting ready for this podcast, uh, I think something very important was happening at, at the early um, 2000 something. It seems to me uh, the first books, which I remember, they appeared in the uh, 1990s and they uh, basically started shaping the whole industry. Right. But uh, yeah, the, uh, for us, um, it sort of uh, started um, in 2000 something, I'd say. Right, so let's say early 2000s. So yeah, we we arrive in the early 2000s, and like not to go, you know, 25 years back. Let's 
rewind just a little bit and would you tell us maybe what what, what was it like what was the field like say 10 years ago what, what was ux and ui situation so to say what was happening uh you know 10 years ago uh, it was m for me it was more or less the same uh, i'd say uh of course, uh, the techniques are developing nowadays. And uh, the most important thing for me is that there is more trust to UX. Uh, it means that more projects, they start with UX, which was not uh, so even 10 years ago. Uh, this I can remember because I became head of design in 2014. Uh, so that's why uh, I can refer to this phase uh, pretty well uh, but uh, like a bit earlier of course it was uh, completely different uh, I just uh, I understand that you don't want to go that deep but uh, it was such a funny story that I had in 2008 uh, I think so uh, when uh, I went to New York and uh, like a single person from the whole project team went to New York because the client requested it. The client said, I need a designer at the start of the project uh, in my New York office. Uh, at that time, it was a very rare case because mostly you know, managers went to, to the client's office, not designers. Uh, so I went there and uh, uh, I participated in the meetings. I did something apparently, but only later, I think, after coming back, I understood what the client actually meant by this. Uh, he really wanted to start the process as it is in the books, so that the UX person talks to the users, uh, collects all the information, starts with uh, creating information architecture, navigation, and uh, raw wireframes, and so on and so forth. But uh, at that time, it was such a breakthrough concept that uh, 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 I even didn't know how how to deal with it. Nowadays, of course, it's uh, very different. Uh, nowadays, people, in many cases, they understand that it's better to start with uh, like thinking how people deal with the product and not developing it straight away. Right. Well, this is a really cool example, though, actually, the one. From the, from two thousand eight, well, that also sounds like really challenging. I wonder, what was that? Was that you know, did it feel very difficult and challenging in the moment? Were you? How did you? How did you solve this? Uh, well, if to talk about this particular client, I think I was mostly confused because uh, I myself <laughs> didn't understand what was required uh, in that situation, uh, but. Uh, we actually gained this knowledge uh, rather quickly because, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in the same year uh, we started this uh, user experience competence uh, at DateArt. So we started uh, thinking about it and getting to know the processes. Uh, I uh, googled what we read at that time because we had those meetings, uh, like a group of enthusiasts, uh, had meetings and we read certain books and we discussed them and we thought how we could implement uh, uh, what uh, is there in the books in our work. So it sounds like you were relying on books quite a bit back in the day. So it was books and like specific data or did it ever, did you ever like rely on your intuition, you know, stuff like that? Is it uh, 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 I'd say. We, we mostly relied on intuition, probably. Uh, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, of course, we promote data-driven design quite a lot. Uh, and uh, uh, also, um, uh, data collection tools are much better. Uh, so, for example, uh, I think years ago, there was no even Google Analytics, uh, but now it's quite different. So uh, uh, Google Analytics, uh, as it works now, uh, appeared 
in 2005 maybe, then it was uh, also evolving adding more features and for example um, something that we take now for granted it wasn't always there let's say when people started using a lot of different devices uh, google also added this feature that you could collect the information basing on id and not a device but it wasn't uh, from the start so, of course, the data collection evolves and how we deal with this data also evolves. Uh, but um, I think that uh, big and serious products, they pay a lot of attention to data collection and they mostly try nowadays to make informed decisions, uh, which is logical. Uh, because when you see how users interact with your product, it's much easier to understand what else they might need and what you need to improve. Uh, at the same time, in some cases, I think that people uh, need intuition. I also um, believe that uh, real visionaries, uh, they do quite a lot basing on their intuition uh, because uh, you know as in this famous example about Henry Ford uh, who said that if I had asked the users people uh, what they wanted mostly they would say that they wanted faster horses you cannot uh, create something completely new only basing on what you hear from people. You need some intuition and some vision uh, inside yourself. But if we are talking about regular products, of course, uh, it's better to look at the data. And uh, as I said, uh, some big products, they're doing it. And of course, it's good if you start with some data, whether you collect it with the user research or from some statistics. Uh, you need both um, quantitative and uh, qualitative data always. Right. So now we've arrived uh, at the present, more or less. We started to talk about nowadays. So nowadays, the UI UX processes have evolved to rely mostly on data with a little bit of intuition, but also, you know what I wonder? Uh, with so many tools and methods and things available now, you know, for designers, um, how do you actually decide what to use? How do you prioritize what to use? Does it make the design processes smoother and easier or more complicated? What would you say? Um... I'd say it makes uh, it uh, more structured. And also, if you have some tools and some data, it's usually easier to communicate your uh, solutions to the others. Because that is one of the main uh, issues designers face. Uh, it is very hard to explain your intuition to the audience. So uh, if you just draw uh, a screen and say something like, uh, look at it, it is so good because I had this gut feeling, usually nobody uh, believes you. And also uh, I'm always saying that uh, designers <laughs> are like poor creatures everyone is ready to interfere everybody is ready to uh, comment on your design always so that's why you, you just need to be prepared if you use some techniques usually it's easier well uh, uh, firstly of course it's easier for you to understand what to create but secondly it's uh, easier to discuss it with the stakeholders, with the team. So, for example, if you have a, a customer journey map drawn and uh, this is a visual artifact uh, showing uh, 
the user's way with the possible frustrations and uh, steps and goals and so on, uh, it's much easier to discuss it and uh, to discuss the resulting interface this way. I see. Okay, that makes sense to me. You know, I've been reading a little bit about UI UX also in preparation for our talk. And I've been reading a lot about those methods and what's going on now. And I got drowned in all the tools. And you know, another thing that kept like catching my attention is the fact that there is a lot of talk on how UI UX and designs in general um, has to, you know, focus on inclusivity and accessibility these days. So I wonder. Is that something that you also think about a lot with your team and do you integrate those principles in your work? Uh, I love this trend. Uh, I think it's very important. It's slowly um, growing and evolving. And uh, I I don't think that it can be fast because adding accessibility to your product is a big step and it's a big effort. So, uh, you know how people think about it, unfortunately, in many cases. Uh, if you uh, need twice more people and uh, budget to make your product uh, fully accessible, and if you think that uh, no one with uh, any disability is going to use it. Of course, you won't do that. But um, uh, it's not fair to the users. And also, I really like the idea. Uh, I, I heard a very good talk about it uh, on a conference. Uh, the idea that many people can be um, and have some disabilities uh, from time to time. Like a person uh, can break their arm, for example, and uh, they will have to work with the same system they work usually, or have a baby in their hands, which is also some sort of restriction in your actions. So that's why it's really great when people pay attention on that. If to talk about um, ourselves, uh, we train designers to think about it. For example, if we have, uh, when we have um, trainees, we always uh, teach them to, to pay attention on accessibility principles. But the thing is that uh, I think that uh, accessibility, it is something, uh, when we're talking about digital products, uh, maybe 25% is design and then 75% is uh, coding and uh, some part of it is about content. So it's not only about design, but uh, at the same time, designers, yes, they uh, at least try to uh, use the plugins that check the contrast, that check the font size, and so on. So this part is more or less covered. Again, if the clients agree that this is an important thing for them. But nowadays, more and more products are actually being checked and regulated uh, okay. by, yeah, by the government, which is good. So I think this trend will go further. Right. I will ask you in a second about other things that might go further, but still uh, one more thing that just came to mind. You mentioned that um, everybody tends to have an opinion on design and it can be quite something. And you know what I'm thinking? I feel like everybody also you might have an opinion on, hey, but what business value does this bring? How is UI UX going to help my business? And, and if you hear questions like these, I'm sure you have. <laughs> uh, I, wanna, I just want to ask you, UI UX uh, is not just about aesthetics, right? So I wonder, what, is, how do, what do you think about it, first of all? And how, how, how is it even possible to measure the business value of 
good UI UX? Like how do companies decide how much to invest and what the return on this investment will be? If you could just quickly comment on that, very curious. Uh, I'd say that it's difficult to measure. <laughs> I think so. Because uh, many clients, uh, well, not, not many clients, but many businesses apparently don't care. Oh. Uh, well, uh, I think we all, uh, all designers already commented on the uh, European banking apps, for example, that are in many cases just awful. But um, I think it's about competition partially. And uh, I, I, I don't know if uh, uh, those banks, they want to invest because it seems that everything is okay as is. But uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it really uh, depends uh, on the competition and uh, on what you want to achieve, I would say, as a business. Yeah. And sometimes, uh, of course, the important thing is to avoid uh, big mistakes, uh, which can lead to some big losses. So in order to avoid this, of course, businesses need to invest into UX, but then I, I think it, again, somehow it depends. Uh, for example, uh, let's say uh, booking.com appeared at some point, and then some years later it was Airbnb, and they had completely different approach to UX and UI and branding uh, because they were so good looking and friendly and engaging so completely different experience uh, but uh, booking nevertheless is still alive and uh, they have um, revenue growth so they i'm sure there is a huge team of designers and they work on it only i think they have their mm. audience and they are making some small incremental changes according to the data they have, according to the research they have, but they don't change everything completely. But for the new products, uh, I truly believe that nowadays without good UX, you won't um, gain anything. Uh, but if to um, go uh, back to measurements, some things uh, connected with the UX, y y you can just measure. So the, the number of errors, for example, uh, even now we're working on this uh, case study about uh, travel management system. And there, there is uh, this documented um, decrease in booking errors from 20% to six after they changed uh, the whole UX and UI of the product. Wow, that's, that's pretty obvious numbers. <laughs> what will stay with me is the new slogan for Airbnb, apparently, which is what you said, good looking, friendly and engaging. That's excellent. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe you can uh, offer <laughs> this as a slogan. Um, uh, we have arrived slowly um, to the future, Anastasia, just to a little bit to speculate, like, what do you think? Where are we going? What do you think is going to happen in terms of UI, UX processes in the next years? We obviously, I cannot not mention AI and automation. It's everywhere. Uh, as a follow-up question right away, do you think it's going to replace certain aspects of UI, UX or help UI, UX? What do you think? Just your thoughts on the future. Uh, I'm pretty sure that um, at some point it will replace some parts of UI UX, only it's not completely clear which parts for now, because now, mm, you know, I, I love ChatGPT. Uh, and uh, designers already um, started using it, for example, for competitors' research or for creating a persona, uh, something like this. But 
it's really this, you know, as in the books, there is this concept of uh, unreliable narrator. So when I talk to uh, ChatGPT, this is like this unreliable narrator. It tells me something which looks convincing, but you're like, something is off. I'll go check what it told me. And mostly uh, something is really wrong in the information uh, it gives you. So you, you always have to double check what it told you. Uh, and in terms of um, like UX itself, creating wireframes and so on, I think it is not that smart yet, but probably for some simple uh, operations, um, at some point it will manage, um, I'm pretty sure. But uh, we are creating, at least here at DataArt, but I think it's a, a trend in the world, like getting to very, complex and big systems and products. And for them, you, you need to, to think. I, I don't know if it can think or not. Uh, but what definitely is a big step for designers is that they now manage to create illustrations and drawings uh, for themselves uh, easily. And this is a big thing, I'd say. You can easily add uh, some, I don't know, beauty to your website if you master how to make good prompts in mid-journey. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to think a lot for that? You have to think, but um, if you want to draw uh, a picture, you need to train for years and uh, in case with mid journey you just need to think how to make the right prompt you don't need this hand um, like habit and skill right that's interesting and just to see it just to um, slowly wrap up i want to ask you like a quick Quick fire fun question. Uh, it's something that I would personally ask you if I were to meet you somewhere. Uh, I would ask you, what advice would you give to someone just starting out today? Someone just starting out today in UI UX. I'd say pay attention uh, on your communication skills. Oh, wow. The and because uh, it's getting only worse or better, uh, it, it depends on your approach. But um, technical skills are definitely not enough for UX designers at all. Uh, I think that maybe half of a good UX designer is uh, the ability to present your decisions, to communicate with different stakeholders, to decide uh, which opinion is right, which opinion is wrong, and how to deal with those that you consider wrong. So it's a big deal. And uh, if you don't um, understand it at the start, it will be very difficult to, to like do it and to wow. work in this field. This is actually very good advice, I imagine, for many fields, but I didn't expect to hear it in, like, uh, as a response to the design uh, career. So that's really interesting. It's kind of like you can supposedly learn all kinds of tools, but can you learn people skills? Exactly. Yeah. And design, even though UX design is a, an engineering thing, sort of because you take into consideration different aspects and you uh, you think about it in an engineering way but still it's very subjective you will always get opinions from all sides yeah also designers i feel like you guys really should have thick skin if everybody has an opinion on your work not for very it's emotional not people, easy <laughs> yeah yeah Anastasia, I could ask you one million more questions, but I will just ask one last one this time, I promise. But these days, what is it that sparks 
your creativity? What is it in in the you know in the UI UX in the design sphere kind of? What is it that you are reading, watching, thinking about, are excited about? What is it that gives you this little zhuzh, so to say? <laughs> Oh, that's a uh, that's a good question. Uh, I think the the last two years uh, I'm mostly excited about different foreign languages because that's basically what, what I try to master all the time. Uh, and really? uh, yeah, it, it's uh, uh, not about UX, but uh, some things um, that are happening in the field of UX uh, I really love. Uh, for example this uh, personalization which adds on in different apps i think it's really cool i'm actually waiting for the uh, apps to be able to decide everything for me because uh, sometimes it's so difficult and people are so stressed uh, uh, i think we don't want to decide all the time we want to be relaxed mostly so mm, I really hope that at some point I will just, I don't know, you know, we, we had a meeting with designers, uh, with the design team here in Belgrade a couple of weeks ago, and we're always meeting in the same cafe. And we're all tired of this cafe already because the, how many times can we go there? Uh, and somebody said, let's go to another place this time. And then we were like, okay, who is going to decide? And there was silence. And okay, seems we go to the same place again. So I think if we had this app that could uh, collect all our preferences and just give us the best option, we would be quite happy. Amazing. So Anastasia Rajab, head of Data Arts Design Studio, wants her apps to tell her what to wear, what to eat, and where to go, correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like this. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us, Anastasia. I really enjoyed talking to you. It was fascinating to me to speak with you, actually. Um, and thank you so much to our listeners for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And as always, we want to hear from you. If you have any thoughts, insights, questions, do reach out to us at this step forward at datart.com. That's all for today. Take care, download some apps, and see you next time. Thank you. Thanks for listening to BizTech Forward. Be sure to subscribe and rate the podcast to stay updated on the latest in business and technology. Join us next time for more insights and forward-thinking discussions. Presented by DataArt.